the idea of an Indian Institute of Science, Education, Research came up because in India there were no institutions where young people could go for the best education in science, unlike in engineering where we have many institutions. And I remember saying that uh, Indian Institute of Science will complete 100 years of its journey very soon, but I mentioned to the Prime Minister that this will be the only Indian Institute of Science for a country of a billion and built by Tata, not by the government, and we need to do something. Furthermore, it was very important that education of undergraduates was carried out in an atmosphere where there was first-rate research going on. In fact, the undergraduates themselves should participate in research. Because education disseminates known knowledge, research creates new knowledge, and we must get that together. And we came up with a kind of a three-page or a four-page document, which essentially defined the guiding principles of what this institution should be like. That A, it should be an undergraduate education in science. Two, it should combine teaching and research very intimately so that people learn by practice rather than by simply reading a textbook. And it should have a seamless, uh, you know, uh, connection between undergraduate, postgraduate, PhD. And education should be an integrated education. I mean, we should not have what we had at that time felt in Indian science education, too many walls. Here the idea was that people should relearn every branch of science, chemistry, physics, biology and mathematics, and of course choose to specialize in one or two. This idea got immediate response from all concerned, from the Ministry of Human Resources Development, Prime Minister, and the Planning Commission supported it as well. The conceptual is path-breaking. A tremendous credit should be given to the government that they thought of starting five visas. But in India, a student has to go through multiple stages of getting evaluated, you know, before he finishes his PhD. This packaging the whole thing is basically aiming to reduce the number of ages, number of years the students spend to earn a degree. Shortening the time of PhD is going to be a greater incentive for more people to pursue PhD in science. When the uh, discussion about where the new ISIS should come up, I was there in the meeting, I was the Director General of CSIR, and uh, I remember instantly, without taking anybody's permission, I said, we will give 100 acre of land for ISIR, the land that NCL had. If there is an MOU between CSIR and ISIR, or rather Ministry of Human Resource Development for starting up an academic campus. The national laboratories and the educational institutions have bifurcated over a period of time, you know. I wanted them to come close together. There is a proposal of at least 2,000 students in this campus and that will help our faculty to interact with many young undergraduates which we don't get in NCL. NCL by itself has post-master students which are, which are basically master's students doing project or PhD, which are of the order of about 900. So you can imagine that this has a good ecosystem. So excellence is created by a wide network of ecosystems where you have many people pursuing outstanding scholarly, scholarly activities, you have lots of students pursuing scholarly activities and there is an opportunity for them to interact and share. So I would expect uh, in the years to come the two not only working together, working together synergistically and making one plus one not equal to two, but 11. And I think it has been a kind of a win-win situation. You can see a thin border separates us, but it should be borderless really between ISIL and NCL. In fact, uh, not only just the academics, but also there are a lot of uh, industry interactions. There are interactions for entrepreneurship. And I think all together, uh, this should be a very good hub in which both NCL and ISER can grow. In 2005, I received a formal uh, letter from the Ministry of Human Resources Development saying that the Scientific Advisory Committee to the Prime Minister, which was headed by Professor C.N.R. Rao, had recommended setting up of 
institutions of advanced teaching and research exclusively for science. 2005, the first uh, memorandum was issued for an implementation committee of the ISAT Pune. I never seen a faster decision making in the government in my life. We started this exercise in the month of March and by July there was an approval with a preliminary budgetary uh, sanction. The ISAR Pune was one of the first two which actually uh, got going. We had to frame a broad curriculum uh, that kind of fits in with this vision of ISAR. There was a syllabus uh, meeting of the ISAR and for all ISARs, a common syllabus. We assembled in National Chemical Laboratory Pune a group of very eminent uh, professionals. About 60 experts from all over the country in different disciplines gathered in NCL campus. And the whole idea was before they left, they should give us a curriculum. And in fact, that syllabus has been the kind of basis of the initial uh, curriculum of, of the ISERs. The second thing was that we needed to organize the infrastructure. We needed space to accommodate 60 students. We needed lecture rooms, classrooms, labs. MHRD was extremely liberal with money. They said, the classes must begin in August 2006. We needed to advertise, we needed to get the students application in, uh, we needed to screen, we needed to select the students. Our target was that by July 2006, everything should be ready. We didn't have any faculty, okay, except Dr. Ganesh. When I was appointed as the director of ISAR Pune in July 2006, I did not really know what I was up to. Dr. Shivram, who was very much involved in ISER, he gave me two advisors. You know, he told me, look, Ganesh, first make the rules and then appoint administrators. It's a golden rule, that was one. The second thing he said was, you don't carry any baggage of the past. So you have a green land before you. And Pune is a beautiful, you know, wonderful city. There are so many people here who are retired, who have come back after very you know, great careers and we quickly touched base with as many such people as we can. I had very good colleagues, although they were all visiting faculties we called, we had not appointed any of the permanent faculties. We did not compromise on quality, uh, many of them were, you know, outstanding. The first Board of Governors meeting happened in Indian Institute of Science where I work, in the faculty hall. And Professor Sienara was chairing that. He was one of the major prime mover behind this whole concept and we got involved in this beautiful idea because this is an excellent opportunity to develop Indian science.